EF400 is an entry-level class AB headphone amp and DAC combo offered by Hyphman. It has a few very cool unique traits and decent subjective performance. However, its objective performance falls short in measurements, and it appears to be slightly less powerful than advertised. In my opinion, for the discounted price of $400, it can compete in terms of the sound quality it offers. However, if you are somebody who cares deeply about measurements, consider looking into some higher-end Hyphenman amplifiers that have superior measurements. With that said, please leave a like and let's take a closer look at the EF400, starting with its build quality and design. It's a regular, rather compact, desktop-sized black box, made fully out of black aluminum, with a thick, silver-brushed aluminum front plate as a color accent. There is a thinner outer sheet of black painted aluminum going from the top to the left and right side, which screws in on the bottom. The bottom and back of the EF400 consist of a single piece of aluminum as well. The device feels quite heavy when held, because of the oxygen-free copper toroidal transformer inside and all metal chassis, it weighs a little over 3 kilograms, almost 7 pounds. All the inputs and outputs are in the back. For the input, we've got a USB. Period. There is just a USB, so this amplifier is made specifically for desktop use, which is okay for me. However, if you are missing other types of inputs, you can look at the EF600 for example, which is a step up from this model and includes more inputs. But yeah, there are just two types of a single input the typical USB Type B, and more of a modern solution, which I appreciate a lot, USB Type C. It can also output full line level, non volume controlled, analog signal through the unbalanced RCAs or balanced XLRs on the back. There is a standard 3 pin power plug with a ground connection and a power switch alongside some small vents. On the bottom, a voltage selector lets you pick either 230 volts or 115 volts. It's important to note that the voltage currently in use is displayed on the red switch itself. Keep this in mind to avoid damaging your unit. The four feet are equipped with a foam material to reduce vibrations and prevent scratches when adjusting its position on a desk. The feet can be removed by unscrewing the screws and replaced if desired. The front of the EF400 is by far its best looking part. I love the symmetry of the two knobs and the headphone outputs. Going from the left, there is a gain selector slash oversample mode knob with four options. It's very tactile and feels great. For the headphone outputs, there is a single-ended quarter inch jack, a single-ended 3.5mm jack and two balanced headphone outputs in a form of 4.4mm and 4-pin XLR. On the very right, there is a volume knob that while being smooth, has some excess wobble to it. Some people seem to make it a bigger deal than it is for me. It's not a huge deal breaker, as it doesn't make the volume control very difficult to use or anything of that sort. There is maybe a millimeter of wobble in the rotation. The DAC part of this unit is pretty interesting, as it's not a regular Sigma Delta approach. It's a Himalaya R2R DAC, Hyphen's proprietary approach to resistor ladder array, digital to analog converters on a chip. It can do PCM up to 192kHz at 32 bits. There is a unique option of NOS, non-oversampling. It often leads to even worse measurements unless you're using an external oversampling filter, but a warmer or in some way more fun listening experience. The difference between oversampling and non-oversampling is not huge, but it's audible. In my experience, oversampling led to a more busy though detailed experience. On the other hand, Non-oversampling sounded cleaner, yet warmer, with ever so slightly wider soundstage. It's fantastic to have the option to choose between two modes, depending on your gear, the track you're listening to, or personal preferences. This DAC has one more special feature. It operates in a four-channel mode, allowing for fully balanced output and separation between each channel at once. The thing is, they either made a mistake or intentionally designed it so one channel is slightly delayed by just one sample compared to the other. Although it's not noticeable in terms of one channel playing the sound later than the other, this delay creates a more euphoric soundstage for some people. However, others can get dizzy due to this effect. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. 
the EF400 amplifier cannot be listened to without its built-in DAC. So my sound impressions are based on the entire DAC and amp combo. The first thing I noticed about it is that it sounded soft, very soft, even compared to the seemingly similar EF600. What often comes with the softness is some vocal sweetness added. That's the case here as well. But it takes away from the punchy nature of some headphones. I would not recommend this amplifier for a headphone like the HE6SC, Sasvara or Mothouse Tungsten. If you possess any of them, you should be aware of their power requirements and probably step up the ladder to pick some higher-end source gear, as the EF400 won't let them spread their wings in terms of the dynamics and it probably lacks some power to get the most out of them. The thing with the EF400's power is odd. They advertise it to be 4.4 watts per channel, which sounds pretty impressive for this kind of device, but independent measurements were able to get roughly 3 watts into 32 ohms out of it. It's still plenty unless you're running a very high-end or power-demanding headphone. The signal-to-noise ratio is 118 decibels, and total harmonic distortion plus noise is specified to be between 0.002 and 0.004%. The channel separation is 125 decibels. Everything that I just mentioned may sound unimpressive, as it is. The EF400 is clearly not supposed to be a measurement-chasing unit even due to the choice of using an R2R DAC. They are known not to measure as well as Delta Sigma units, but they offer superior subjective performance. I believe that subjective performance was this unit's goal. Regarding this, it offers a very full and rich sound, typical to Class A, or in this case, Class AB designs, though it can sound a little shouty with very raw vocals. You shouldn't be expecting a lot of resolution out of it, but the details that it can resolve are presented in a very pleasant, not-in-your-face way. The EF400 sounds very fun and musical, and it's far from being overly analytical. Regarding headphone matching, meaning which headphones sounded good with it, almost every not-crazy-hard-to-power hyphen that I've got sounded very, very pleasant. It takes a bit of the edge off of, of the sometimes sharp or bright leading tuning. Anything from the HER9, Openback Sundara, Deva Pro, or Edition Excess sounded like it was a perfect fit. Hyphen knew what they were doing, making an amp that matched perfectly with their headphones. But there is one exception that I didn't particularly like the entry level HC400SE. This headphone doesn't do particularly well with busy passages, and the added harmonics of this amp made it even worse. Maybe it was a power thing, as the HE400SE requires quite a bit of it, but I doubt it. I also doubt that anyone would pick a $400 DAC amp for a roughly $100 entry-level headphone. Generally, all headphones, except for those that are extremely difficult to drive, mid-forward or dark-sounding, sound excellent when connected to this amplifier.